Um, so mine's called Find That Plug Day. So in 2010, uh, in the summer, I spent five weeks in Rwanda. And I get off the plane, and it smells like campfire from the wood cook stoves that everyone uses for cooking in Rwanda. And it's this carcinogenic wood cooking stove overload. But you'll be happy to know um, that despite this sustainable, unsustainable practice that Rwandans have figured out a way to rein in the overpopulation of plastic bags. I find this out immediately because the airport plastic bag police approaches me. <laughs> See, I had um, shrink-wrapped my luggage in, from Brussels on the way to Rwanda to keep everything safe, and apparently they consider that a very, very, very tight plastic bag, <laughs> which I had to remove immediately. The cabbie grabs my freely skinned, newly freely skinned bag, um, and rolls down the hill to the cab, and um, I'm in Rwanda because uh, my ex was there working on a green building project. Um, he wasn't my ex when I got the gig to teach a screenwriting <laughs> class and, at the Rwanda Cinema Center, and he wasn't my ex when I got a grant to uh, buy a camera to shoot something there. But he was my ex when I landed, and he wasn't going to be there for a couple of weeks. So I had a couple of weeks to find some answers, uh, maybe find some revenge, and, um, and to find that plug, which is the name of the story. So the cabbie drives me to the 20% off carpet sign, which is across the street from my walled and guarded house that I'll be staying at. I am greeted by a house full of strangers, and this is a place that my ex lived for six months while I had, while I had been in grad school. And partly why I was there was to shoot um, videos on the sustainable elements of the green building project he was doing. So I was in touch with the composting guy, and the, and the biogas man, and the UV water filtration guy. And in a couple days, I was going to be shooting Valentino. And Valentino was, um, had the great idea of installing composting toilets um, in all the public toilets um, in Rwanda. Um, if you don't know what a composting toilet is, it's a, it's, um, it's a dry toilet, so there's no water used. Waste is deposited, <laughs> um, and then ash is put on the waste, and it's, the bin is moved out into the sun, and it becomes fertilizer. Um, and I became really enamored with the simplicity of this idea. Um, throughout Africa, the standard latrine is the pit latrine, which is essentially a large hole with a cover over it. And it's a very unsustainable practice and is the center of a lot of disease and contamination. There's also the um, flush toilet, but the flush toilet is, um, uses a lot of water and needs a lot of infrastructure to, to be maintained. So there's a lot of other sort of things about flush toilets that aren't so good. So um, coming from uh, a dance and um, sort of avant-garde freakdom, I was, um, decided I would concoct um, a, a scheme around these videos um, and that it would all revolve around the idea of a, of a toilet revolution. And I thought I would um, tell the story from the perspective of a gang of tchotchkes. So I brought, oh, I actually had them, oh, but they're in the back. I'll show you later. <laughs> um, I brought a, uh, a little jumping toy bear and a uh, giraffe. Yeah, you, they're in my bag. Awesome. Um, and I brought a, a little duck with a little wobbly head and um, a hippo. Um, so I told the story through the, the lens of these uh, characters, and then I also I did make the people that I interviewed do dances at the end of. <laughs> I said I got all of them dancing. It was great. They were like, yes, yes. Um, so spending my I spent my days um, dreaming up ways to spice up these videos, and I spent my nights um, going to see music and going to film festivals. And on one of my first nights, I went to the Serena hotel to hear some music, and that's where I meet um, one of the band members for Modern English. You know the, you know the song, the, the, I'll stop the world in love with you. Okay, anyway, that guy, I, I meet in, in Kigali, and then, um, and then I, um, at the Serena, also I run into my um, 
old uh, jazz funk dance teacher from New York City. <laughs> and we freak out, like major American style. Like, oh my god! Like, you would think we were both musical theater majors, you know? Like, oh, and these are the Chachkis. Look at this, this is my little guy. Hello. And this is the jumping bear. Oh, I tried to make him jump. He, you'd wind him, he doesn't jump anymore. That's very sad. They're retired. <laughs> so, um, and then of course uh, I meet, um, and then I meet William. Um, he's this tall Bel Belgian Rwandan, and um, he kind of he kind of tracks me down because we rode the um, plane together from Brussels, and he made up the story like I was there to hug hug gorillas, and little did he know I was there to um, start a toilet revolution. <laughs> and we sit together, and it's a serious like. Um, I'll stop the world and melt with you situation. <laughs> and, um, and I'm like, oh, I'm thinking, I could have rebound, I could have revenge sex. Um, but I immediately concoct a story that he's just, he's too young, he's too scared, and he's too shy, and I'm like, and I'm like, um, and I, and I will, destroy him with my sadness and rage. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so uh, that's when I immediately stand up. Um, so I don't have to face the possibility of disappointment. disappointment. So instead of facing that disappointment, I decide it's time to start focusing on the toilet revolution. Um, before I got to Rwanda, I called up the Rwanda Cinema Center and I said, you know, I need a sound device to shoot. And they said, oh, yeah, no problem. So I get there and it was a problem. There was, there was no sound, they had no sound record, professional sound recorder. But they did have a mic that I could plug into my camera. But see, the, the, but the plug didn't fit into my camera. So we had to go find that plug, let's refine that plug to start. So they assigned Christian to me, who's, um, one of the uh, best dressed Rwandans I've ever seen. He always has an ascot, uh, and he's always got a tailored shirt on and like this very smart mustache. The next day, uh, it's 8 a.m., I'm very anxious about getting the sound, and I'm gonna go meet him. And I walk past the dogs who are blissfully chewing on avocados from the abundant, overabundant avocado tree by the, on the, by the driveway. Unfortunately, the um, perfect doggy snack tree will be run over by the new rental car that looks like a Scooby-Doo Scooby mobile in about two weeks. So I get into the car, the, the Scooby-Doo mobile is delivered, this is two weeks later. Um, and I get in the car and um, it's dark out, which means it's like 6.15, because it's like on the equator, so it's just like, bam, it's dark. So I get in the car, I turn it over and it lurches forward, and I'm like, oh, right, it's a stick. You know, ah, a stick. I say, put it in the clutch, and I'm like, what's happening? And then it's like dark, and it's like, wait a minute, what's happening? And then I'm like, like trying to find the brakes. And uh, I'm just going backward. I don't even really know it, because it's pitch dark, and I just, bam, hit that thing, and I knock over the dogs perpetual doggy snack tree. Um, so anyway, I walk past the dogs who are eating avocados and I go down the hill and I go um, out to meet Christian and I go past the 20% off carpet sign and I go down the hill and up the hill and past the grocery store that's got bad vegetables and down the road with the, the dust everywhere and past the stairs at the Mazungo, which means white person. And then I go to the expat coffee shop, it's 8.30. We all know where this is going. And then it's 9, and then it's 9.30, and then it's 10, and then it's 10. It's like, finally get on the phone with Christian, and um, he's like, I'll be there in 40 minutes, which I have no idea what that means. I'm, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting clued into Africa time. So I'm like, oh, I really need this plug. So I walk back home, so like another walk, down the hill, around the hill, the car's not there yet. And, um, and then Christian comes and we do the same ritual walk. We go down the hill, past the 20% off carpet sign, 
Um, but it takes a lot longer because Christian um, stops to talk to everybody. So we say hello, but we don't just say hello, we talk it out. <laughs> I'm like, did he play blocks with all of these people when he was a child? It's just very confusing, but he's a lot of friends or a lot of new friends. Either way, we walk, we finally get to the electronics district, and um, <laughs> we're in this uh, 10 by 10 by 12 electronics store, and there's Bollywood movies on every every screen. And Christian talks to these two men, and they're like, you know, fingering the cord, and, and they're like, oh, Mar Martha, we have to go to the back. And I'm like, wow, this is like really exciting cord shopping, going to the back. So we go to the back, but the back is the courtyard, and the courtyard, women are sewing, and ironing and men are refurbishing everything like shoes radios TVs books I mean anything you can it's being refurbished and um, we do more talking and then I stand in this group of men and now there's now there's a, an electrician with a blue lab coat on and then they're um, you know, they're talking about like <laughs> male plug is supposed to be the female plug it's like maybe it's the we're supposed to switch the male plug to the, I don't know what type, but there's a lot of talking about the male and the female plug. And then it's like, maybe the male and female plug needs to be attached to the quarter inch. And I'm just like, this is like plug porn over here. So, um, and I'm just standing there listening, like, um, trying to be helpful by being attentive, which I think just shows up as being anxious. So, <laughs> Christian says, you know, Martha, have a seat and relax. So, okay, so I sit down and kind of like in front of this um, little stand that's maybe selling things. And I feel this bug. And I'm like, oh, bug. And I turn around and it's, it's this woman's like, and she, she was playing with my hair. And so I turn back around and I, and I feel it again. And I'm just, and I look back and she's so like, <laughs> I, I just kind of, I just let her keep doing it because it kind of feels good, <laughs> doesn't it? Like, oh, that's kind of nice. So um, I'm getting uh, I, so I'm getting spa day, obviously with this woman, and then the electrical magician guy is doing like a sex change on the cord. So they're essentially making a new cord. Is what they're doing. <laughs> So we um, we go we got we got this magic new magic cord and we got um, we go to pay the, the bill um, and and the guy says smile big smiles he tells me he loves me very much um, which is actually quite nice after a long day of blood <laughs> so honestly and um, so we go back to the Rwanda Cinema Center uh, but the thing is it's like the cord actually wasn't right. So we did all that cord thing, and it was like the it was the wrong cord. It didn't work. <laughs> so, um, so I go back home, and uh, I'm telling my roommates this, and Dave goes, "Ah, oh, wait right here." And I'm like, "Okay." So he comes out, and he has a professional sound recorder in his hand. And like all this while, there's like one in the next room, and I had no idea. So I got my sound recorder. So anyway, so I didn't find answers, and I didn't find my revenge sex. <laughs> um, uh, and I, you, the dogs will tell you, I, I didn't really find the breaks. <laughs> but I, but I did find my ex dance teacher. I found a rock star. I found a walkathon. Essentially, I found some um, plug porn. I found a toilet revolution and I found a really good time. <laughs>